Well, boys and girls and everybody in between, it's time once again to update us all on what's going on in the scene of the arena game, the indoor game, you know, football, the springtime, springtime football, you know. Um, to start us off, let's just, let's just go with the, you know, the obvious you know stuff and that is the NAL releasing their schedule they released their schedule a week after I made the last update on October the 14th so you know that update is you know you know there the NAL getting free agency done you know, and stuff like that guys get inside right now again um, let's just go over you know the real the real good stuff right here because again you know it's 14 game season. Eight teams are playing 14 games a piece in 17 weeks, and the season will begin again on April the 1st. So the NAL is back to its original place in April, because you know the last couple of years it's been kind of weird. Like the first weekend of April, like 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 last season was like the second or third weekend of April that they started up, but usually it's the first weekend of April. And that's always good stuff. And the season will end on July the 22nd, which sets up the NAL Championship for August the 12th weekend, which will probably be the same date as the IFL Championship yet again, uh, just based off of logistics. You know, that's just what I'm thinking, but no, nothing from the IFL right now. Again, players are being signed left and right for most teams, except for like Fayetteville. I know Fayetteville... A lot of people are kind of concerned that Fayetteville hasn't signed anybody at the moment, but they'll sign some people. They'll sign some people, I bet. You know, um, I have no real concerns about the NAL schedule or anything. I have no real concerns about, you know, the signings right now. Uh, I haven't even looked into them. I know some guys that do, though, who I always plug every time, you know, when it comes to talking about the NAL, and that's my boy Zach and Jim over at Inside the Walls Podcast. Boys be out there doing something real good, and the NAL go to them. So I'm sure they're gonna have something real soon talking about the free agency signings and stuff like that. But for me personally, at the moment, I couldn't tell you. I could tell you nothing. I couldn't tell you anything. I know. Again, I know people are being signed and stuff like that, left and right. But for the most part, uh, I, 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 you, you might as well. I'm not even focused on you know. Who's getting signed to in what league right now? For the most part, uh, I know somebody's pretty angry about Mark Stout. You know, being the head coach of Massachusetts now. I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. Who's probably angry? Who's had a grudge against Mark Stout for a long time? And it's still hilarious that he's still continuing to have a grudge against Mark Stout for no reason whatsoever. Like, let it go. You know who I'm talking about. Let it go, please. I'm begging you. Sad news, though. We got some sad news. Um, Charlotte Thunder, after all this time, they were able to make their own league. And I use that in quotation marks. You know, they were able to get the money needed and stuff like that for a couple seasons now. But it seems like they are, you know, folding. They are dying. Um, they are not playing in 2023. Not sure if they're coming back at all. Usually, if you don't play for a season, that usually spells the end for your team. So, best of luck to all the guys who were with the Charlotte Thunder who have moved on to bigger and better things. And hopefully, you find something new this year, wherever that may be. And speaking of something new, guess. Somebody's back. It's the National Football Association, the NFA. They're back. 2022 was a disaster for them. We've discussed this in the tale, how bad it was for them in 2022. But they brought a bunch of teams, you know, back on over. You know, Chicago Power back. The Central Illinois Royals are back. The West Cheshire Apaches are back. And some other teams are also back. The Indianapolis Forces are apparently back. There's also some new ones like the Missouri Silverbacks, the Southland Raging Bulls, the Milwaukee Wolverines, and the Michigan Hurricanes. All these teams 
are going to be in the NFA for 2023. Um, honestly, after 2022 ended and the way it ended for that league, it was just I was just like, how? Who? What, what, what? I had so many questions pop up in my head about this league and what they were going to do. I know. I know some of us in um, the Discord have had some conversations with some of these guys. Like uh, I know, I know Zach and Jayhawk had a conversation with uh, the Royals' owner, or was it the president, or something like that, quite some time ago. But I know that's on YouTube, which you can go see. I think I'll link that somewhere. But the NFA, I gotta again, 2023. I want 2023 to be big for me. For you know the purpose of covering this the sport that I love so much and I'm passionate about, and I'm I'm trying to figure out what what in the world can we do to get the NFA you know back on its feet. Hopefully things go much better for them in 2023. There's that uh, um that that Mesquite team that we were talking about that Mesquite team the Dallas Outlaws apparently. Uh, I, I know somebody had something to say about this Mesquite team, this Dallas Outlaws team. That was apparently, I believe, this is the team that's in Mesquite that was supposed to be in the CIF, but got kicked out, you know, because of uh, some things that happened in the CIF over the course of the season. Again, a lot of negative publicity from the CIF carried on over, and it affected this team. But this was the team that was supposed to be. I believe was the um, the team that was supposed to be CIF team again. This is the Dallas Outlaws. You can find the logo somewhere. I know I posted it in Discord and everything like that. Um, I I genuinely do not know because I believe there's another Dallas Outlaws. I know Pat Pimmel's like yeah, there's something fishy here, but. I, gen I genuinely think this is supposed to be the team that was supposed to be in the CIF. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that, but for now, I do believe that's what this team was supposed to be. I forgot what arena they're supposed to play in, nor do and I don't really care at this moment. There's also the Tampa Bay Cyclones. They relocated again. Like They just update things like every two months. Now they're in Tallahassee. That That's just a thing that happened. And... You know, they're, they and the Dallas Outlaws, they're in the AIFA now. And the AIFA is, uh, it's something. It's something, you know, that continues to surprise me. I know there was supposed to be something. I know I said something last month about some type of TV deal. But now they, believe they updated their website a little bit to have Roku and Bounce TV on there. And Bounce TV, like nobody gets Bounce TV um, nobody even uses that channel, but I do know that's a thing that's going to happen um, based off of looking at their website real quick. So, other than that, I don't see any new teams added or anything from the AIFA right now, so it is what it is there. We'll skip over the last thing so I can go over Tri-City real quick. Um, Tri-City, they were technically kicked out of the HPA, HPO, HAPO Center. The Hapo Center, and they and they were trying to get into the Toyota Center. They failed on that. They were trying to get into the Kikima Valley Sun Dome, but they didn't go there. And they eventually got something worked out. That there was something with um, you know, another company that you know kind of forced them out. But eventually, there was an agreement reached with that company. On what Friday? I think it was Friday. It was either this Friday, or what? no, it was this Friday. It had to admit this Friday. But they eventually reached an agreement. Tri City will stay at the Hapo Center in 2023 with the AWFC. Looking like they're gonna have 12 games again. I don't know how they're gonna have 12 games again, but they're gonna have 12 games apparently. Let's hope it's 12 games against the league itself. You know, like the actual league, like no, no non-division games, please. I do not want to see that. I'm tired of seeing that in, you know, leagues and stuff like that. I'm tired of seeing that. I'm genuinely tired of seeing that type of stuff. I don't care if it's, oh well, it's to get the town. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. And speaking of, 
you know, we're not doing that. I don't know what I was going to say about that, but I'll tell you one thing. Who's back? Who's back? Guess. Guess who's back? You don't know? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's the American Arena League. They're back. After uh, 2022, in which they sat idly, nobody was doing anything for you know the league 2022. There were again there were Facebook posts and stuff like that, but for most of 2022, they stayed quiet. Let the leagues that splintered from them and the CIF, you know, do their thing and fail. Because again, Charlotte is dead. West Michigan, don't know where they are, don't know where they're going to be for 2023. You know, the AIFA, disaster. You know, other other leagues, disasters in and of themselves. But, you know, basically all the teams from major indoor football and, you know, a couple leftovers from, like, the EIF and, you know, the one team that did stay from the AL... They're all here for 2023 and also a travel team, you know. So the Maryland Rage, the Jersey Bearcats, the United Firepower, the Maryland Eagles, Reading Raptors, Maryland Warriors, and the travel team Cali Gold. They are going to be the first set. Now, I don't know when they're going to announce the next set of teams, but they are the first set of teams in the AAL for 2023. There might be that AAL 2 thing that's happening and I hope that does not happen. Please, we don't need that. We really don't need that. But tentatively, the AAL is coming back in April of 2023. Tentatively, right now. But that's basically it for this update. Not much else really needs to be said. Again, major focus, you know, was on trying to figure out some of, you know, there were some things that have been happening. Over the past few weeks since we last talked about the arena indoor scene. And some of those things have been resolved. Some of the things have not been resolved. Again, just to let y'all know. The first weekend of March, this weekend indoor football will return for season number three. And you know, we're gonna you know we're gonna rock and roll it all the way, it seems, until at least August the twelfth, so like 20 plus weeks of rocking and rolling with that. So, appreciate y'all sticking with me. I know we got a new subscriber the other day. Glad you could come on the board, number 188. And the 189 of us, we're going to keep rocking until we get to 200 subs. And I'll let you know what the next milestone is after that. But until then, keep liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, clicking the notification bell. And doing whatever you need to do to stay on top of what's going on. Because again, there's a lot that's been going on. Uh, some stuff that has been revealed, some stuff that hasn't. And we'll figure it all out together as time goes on. Till then, Big Boy Sports, signing out. And I'll see you again soon.